Warning. Approach with caution. Person thinks is in a cowboy movie. A direct quote from Ashkin's Instagram profile. What would you do if you found yourself in an apartment a couple of floors up, sitting tied to a chair, with your hands behind your back, and your enemies who put out a bounty for you are on their way to come get you? What would you do? We don't know, but we know what Ashkin did. He is described as having a criminal record in 2008 that qualifies him for the list of Sweden's most dangerous men. On Sunday afternoon, April 10, 2005, the police receive a report of a shooting in a park outside infamous neighborhood Rosengard in Malmo, Sweden. When the police arrived, they found five empty cartridge cases and a knife. A man later showed up at an orthopedic clinic in Malmo with gunshot wounds to his leg. He claimed he had been shot for no reason while jogging in the park. The police classify the shooting as attempted murder and do not believe the victim's story that the shots were fired for no reason. Ashcan is 21 years old at the time and already a member of the motorcycle gang called the Brotherhood Wolfpack. He gets arrested for shooting a man of the same age and is sentenced to prison until January 2007. A month after his release from prison, he is arrested again, suspected of murder. On January 27, 2007, at a party hosted by the Brotherhood in the city of Gothenburg, the festivities end with the murder of one of the men at the party. Hocken was a 35-year-old father of three and a tattoo artist. The victim was at the party in Gothenburg when he made the mistake of criticizing someone's tattoo. This led to an exceptionally brutal beating and stabbing with a knife and crowbar. Afterward, Hawkins' body was dumped outside the venue, where he was later found in the alley in a large pool of blood. Two men were convicted in court for Hawkins' murder, one for holding the crowbar used to strike Hawkins' head and the other for holding the knife used to stab Hawkins. The man who held the crowbar was committed to psychiatric care. Ashcan, who initially admitted to holding the knife, was convicted in court and sentenced to 10 years for what was considered murder. Ashkin appealed the verdict to the Court of Appeals, and after the hearing, he was released, and Ashkin was completely acquitted by the Court of Appeals. On the night of July 19, 2007, 23-year-old Ashkin was thrown out of a nightclub in Malmo, along with another man, around 2 a.m. Around 3.30 a.m., two men arrived on a moped, both dressed in black with black helmets. One was armed with an automatic weapon and fired at least three shots at the nightclub's bouncers. The bouncer was alone at the door at the time, but was not injured. Above the entrance where the bouncers stand and greet guests, two bullet holes in the facade were clearly visible. Ashcan was arrested but released due to lack of evidence. He was later convicted and sent to jail for several counts of minor drug offenses, traffic offenses, credit card fraud, bar fights, and possession of a submachine gun, a shotgun, detonating cord sand caps. He was only 23 years old at the time. On November 20, 2007, early in the morning, a bomb exploded by the front door of a townhouse with no injuries but significant property damage. The house belonged to prosecutor Barbara Johnson, who had taken a tough stance against criminal gangs, especially the Wolfpack Brotherhood. The bomb was a clear message and threat to the prosecutor. Malmo, Valpurgis Night 2008, at the Slack Thusset, a.k.a. the Slaughterhouse Nightclub. Ashcan is a 23-year-old man by this time, raised in Malmo, with divorced parents, and his two-year younger brother Amin is with him at the nightclub. Another high-profile pair of brothers in Malmo, criminal underworld, Mirza and Mertes, who have been controlling the cocaine trade in Malmo for a long time, enter the club. Inside, they encounter Ashcan and Amin. A dispute arises between the two younger brothers, and Mirza and Ashcan also get involved in the escalating fight. The involved parties shout and threaten each other. Bouncers and police rush to the scene. Beneath the surface is a long-standing rivalry rooted in seemingly ordinary youth fights, minor scuffles, and threats over several years that culminated in a full-fledged feud between the brother pairs. At this time, Valley and Ashcan are closely connected. Valley, the leader of the so-called K-Faction in Malmo, is suspected of supplying Ashcan with weapons on a previous occasion, and several reports suggest that Ashcan act as an enforcer for Valley, his Valley's muscle. Seven weeks after the Valborg dispute, Valley is shot by a waiting gunman who empties an entire pistol magazine into him. 
Valley is hit by at least seven bullets, but survives the attack. On August 23, 2008, on Ashkin's 24th birthday, he notices a motorcycle circling outside his apartment. He leaves the place with his girlfriend. Shortly afterward, a hand grenade is thrown towards his apartment window. The grenade nearly killed an elderly female neighbor when it exploded near her apartment. On August 28th, a shootout breaks out in Malmo after two cars chase each other, as one witness says. Someone fires at least 10 shots at a car full of the rival M faction men. No one is hit. The trail of the shooter ends with a burned out car and shocked witnesses who tell the police they didn't see anything. Ashcan is the shooter. Ashcan was truly feared. If he ever felt insulted or got pissed at someone, he would literally camp outside the person's apartment, coked up like a cartel member with a pistol until he saw them. He was infamous for doing that kind of stuff. He would take pictures of them while sitting in the bushes, then sending them to the people in the pictures with the message. Your life is now in my hands. Ashken was also one of the only guys during the war between M and K who never tried to hide or leave the country. On Facebook, he would post pictures of himself and his best friend Bisnik walking around the city armed, writing me and Bisnik are on patrol. Also on Facebook, he called all the other guys who went to Balkans while waiting for things to cool down while also bragging about being the only guy who still did business in the city. On Facebook, the two brother pairs in the M and K factions are identified by the police as leaders. But key figures in the gang war during the active years are the third pair of brothers. Ashkan and Amin. Younger brother Amin doesn't stand out among criminals. When the war breaks out in 2008, legal documents indicate a man with depression, drug addiction, and multiple arrests for credit card fraud with stolen cards. In the winter of 2008, Ashcan is arrested and jailed for placing a bomb at the prosecutor's home in 2007, likely on behalf of the Brotherhood. Amin is free, living amid the ongoing conflict. He secures a second-hand apartment in enemy territory. On the evening of August 14, 2009, Mertes heads to the gas station at the intersection. But on the sidewalk stands a lone man with a pistol, Amin. He makes eye contact with Mertes, who stops his car and likely rolls down the passenger window. It cannot be said for sure if the men talk to each other. Amin fires several shots at Mertes, hitting him in the shoulder and head. The car jerks forward and stops. Amin goes around the car, fails to open the driver's door, fires again, and then manages to open the door. He pulls Mertes onto the street and fires a few more shots into him. Amin leaves the dying Mertes bleeding on the pavement, places the gun next to his body, jumps into Mertes' car, a Volvo, and drives away. Amin is linked to the crime through the DNA register. He left blood traces on the steering wheel of the getaway car, which he abandoned just outside Malmo. For some reason, Amin first admits to the crime in one of the early interrogations by drawing a sketch of his actions. But otherwise, he remains silent. No comments is his response during months of interrogation attempts. The fact that Amin was at the gas station at that particular time has led to speculations. Did he know that the M brothers and their friends were going to meet nearby? Was he out scouting for the enemy? It couldn't have been a mere coincidence, could it? During the trial, Amin laughs several times, which does not sit well with the victim's loved ones, leading to chaos in the courtroom. Ashkin's brother Amin was convicted for his part in the murder of Mertes in August 2009. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison in a district court trial in 2010, a sentence that was increased by three years to 18 years in the Court of Appeals. At that time, Ashkin had a picture of the murder his brother committed as his cover photo on Facebook, showing where the dead body had lain. According to the police, at one point in time, Ashkin was betrayed by a close friend in another city who was supposed to hand him over to enemies. He was tied to a chair in an apartment, but he leaped from the balcony, still tied to the chair, to escape. He landed outside the apartment building, freed himself, and vowed revenge and said that he would return soon. At that moment, there was a million Swedish money bounty on Ashkin's head. Ashkin, after being released from a prison sentence and was living under a new identity by the end of April 2014 in a city in northern Sweden. He had spent most of the previous years in prison. On April 28, 
2014, Ashkin met an ex-boyfriend of his then-girlfriend. A fight broke out, and it ended with Ashkin stabbing the other man with a knife. Ashkin was suspected of attempted murder, but was acquitted by a district court, which deemed that he had acted in self-defense. On June 16, Ashkin was released from custody. Afterward, he returned to the Malmo area. In 2014, a 22-year-old man was shot and suffered severe injuries. At 10.13 p.m. on a Monday evening, the police received a report of a shooting at an intersection in Lanskrona. Police patrols were sent to the scene, where they found a man with gunshot wounds lying on a grassy area. During a minor drug transaction, 5 grams of hash, a 22-year-old man on Lanskrona was shot with several bullets, including in the stomach. The man was taken to Lund Hospital with serious injuries, but he survived the attack. The shooter was Ashkan, who was frequently in Lanskrona at the time as his then-girlfriend lived there. On August 15, 2014, Ashkan survived an assassination attempt on the highway between Lund and Malmo. At the time, he was driving a silver car, which was later found abandoned and riddled with bullets on the road. Two weapons were used in the attack. Ashkan survived the attack. On January 31, 2015, Ashkan is believed to have been registered in Malmo, but spent time in Lund as well as in Lanskrona. At 5.35 p.m., Ashkan is at the cash register of a fast food restaurant by the Mobilia Shopping Center. On the surveillance footage from the restaurant, two black-dressed men are seen entering through a door behind him. The men open fire and shoot multiple rounds at Ashkan, who is wearing a bulletproof vest. On the video, witnesses are seen getting up in shock and running towards the door at the same time Ashkan is hit by several shots. Ashkin runs out through a side door to the parking lot outside, and the armed men chase after him, firing more shots. The men chase Ashkan along the parking lot in front of several terrified Saturday shoppers who become witnesses to the deadly pursuit. Several shots hit cars, and people are forced to seek shelter in the hail of bullets. Ashkin runs across the parking lot, severely wounded after being hit by several shots from the pursuing men. Ashkin has been hit in the head, back, and legs. A bit further down the parking lot, he collapses on the ground and dies behind a parked car. The two killers flee the scene in a waiting dark BMW. The killers manage to escape, but a few days after the murder, a dark BMW believed to be the getaway car is confiscated. Two individuals were arrested in October 2015 for Ashkin's murder, but they was later released and the Ashkin murder has never been solved. Like a wanted cowboy with a bounty on his head, much like Billy the Kid, Ashkin dies in a hail of bullets. With Ashkin's death, the gang war between the M and K factions in Malmo is considered to be over.